weeks ago, the FBI announced that we were adding Robert Van Wiese to the FBI's 10 most wanted fugitive list for the murder of Lori Stout here in Austin, Texas. I am very proud to stand here before you in front of the Stout family and announce that Van Wiese has been arrested. He was taken into custody yesterday in Laredo, Texas and brought to Austin. I would like to say that this effort has been a combined worldwide effort by the FBI's Central Texas Violent Crime Task Force with our partners that are here, with the Austin Police Department, with Texas DPS, the U.S. Marshal Service, and working with the District Attorney here in Austin. By putting Van Wiese on the top ten list, he was able to bring to bear the worldwide assets of the FBI. In the last six weeks, we have covered the United States and the world following up on leads, receiving leads from the public thanks to the media and the attention that you brought to this case, and we were able to track him down. It was that incredible pressure that was brought to bear by all of these efforts that Van Wiese saw that he was never going to be able to run away, that he had to turn himself in, and he did. I would like to thank especially Austin Police Department. Uh, the relationship that the FBI has with the Austin Police Chief is second to none. Uh, we work together every single day, so when this came to us and we worked with them on this case, uh, it, was, it was really seamless between us and the local police department. Our partners with DPS, our partners with the Marshal Service, we were all able to bring to a focus, to really a laser focus on this case. It was so outrageous that we felt we had to add this to the top ten list, and in six weeks we found them. And I think it's an important message. I think the message is when we combined our efforts and we can take the power of the FBI with our partners and focus on fugitives that are out there, there is nothing that we can't do. And we will find these people. No matter how long they've been running from justice, we will find them and we will bring them to justice. And we do that for the families that are sit sitting here, and we do that for the citizens of the United States and the citizens of Austin. Um, so I would like to thank everyone's efforts. I'm very proud that we were able to bring this man to justice. With that, I would like to turn it over now to the United States Marshal. Thank you, Mr. Combs. My name is Hector Gomez, Supervisor of the U.S. Marshals here in Austin. I'd just like to add briefly on behalf of these investigative agencies here that were very instrumental in, in uh, making this day possible uh, to the Stout family. That we know that um, closure is an enduring process and uh, we hope today uh, brings you a, a moment of reflection, a moment to think about Lori, and, and of course, we thank you for keeping her memory alive after all these years. So again, thank you. Uh, I will now introduce Margaret Moore, the District Attorney. Excuse me, that's gonna be Chief Manley, Brian Manley of the Austin Police Department. Well, it's great to stand here today, but it's also sad that we are standing here today. But again, as uh, we just heard six weeks ago, we came before you because we were able to put uh, a killer, a violent killer, Mr. Van Wiese, on the FBI's most wanted list. And we knew then, based on the success of the FBI list, we knew that we would bring Mr. Van Wiese to justice. And we thank our federal partners for working with us. It is that strong relationship that keeps not only our community, but the Central Texas region together. It's the relationships we have with the U.S. Marshal Service, with the FBI, with the DPS, with the, uh, the District Attorney's Office that's gonna allow us to bring this to a final conclusion. Um, T.J. Beverly Dale, we can't bring her back, but we can bring her justice. It is justice delayed, but it will be justice. And so, um, Again, our hearts go out to you for your loss. It was a loss for this community, but it was a personal loss for each and every one of you. And I am, again, glad we are here today to be able to announce that we have brought this man into custody and that he will face justice. Um, we've got a lot of committed folks that worked on this besides the federal partners that we just mentioned internally at the police department. We've got a cold case homicide unit that never gives up. It's work that's not always that rewarding because you're working on cases that have gone cold, leads that take a while to follow up on. And so the rewards of making an arrest like we've been able to do in this case 
don't come as frequently as you may like, but when they come, it's the result of a lot of hard work of dedicated men and women who have devoted their life to making sure families that have suffered uh, the unsufferable know that we never give up and we will not stop seeking justice for the family. So um, with that, I will now turn it over to Travis County's new district attorney, Margaret Moore. Thank you. It is a privilege for me to stand here with these uh, dedicated law enforcement officials who worked so hard to bring this fugitive to justice. Um, it, there is, with, without question, the uh, combined uh, efforts here uh, brought relatively swift results once attention was focused. And uh, the awesome power of the FBI ought to be a cautionary tale to anyone out there. Um, I am proud that the district attorney's office was able to play a role in getting us to this point. I need to especially uh, recognize uh, two assistants, uh, Amy Kesner and Katie Sweeten, who as soon as we received notice that uh, Mr. Ben Weesey was going on the most wanted list, took a very old case file and quickly worked it into a prosecutable, prosecutable case, which was no small feat given the number of years. I want to also recognize Lynn Craig, our victim witness counselor. I think all of them worked very hard to keep uh, the Stout family informed and uh, up to date on developments. It was a great honor for me to be able to tell them yesterday that we had him in custody. Um, I, most of all, want to extend my condolences to you, Dale, for losing your mama, and to Beverly and TJ for losing their sister. Um, I hope that knowing that law enforcement never gave up, never gave up, will give you some solace, and I promise you that we will continue to pursue this case and to a just resolution as near in the future as we can get it there. Thank you. <clears throat> Next, I think, President Agent in charge, our, our Texas Ranger. <clears throat> Actually, um, the uh, family members may want to say a few remarks at this time. And, and we just like to remind you all that uh, we appreciate everyone respecting their privacy and not contacting them directly. And we'd ask that you continue to contact the Austin Police Department if you would like to interview or meet with them in the future. And they may be available following uh, this press conference to, uh, to do some remarks, some one-on-one -on -one interviews. Go ahead. Um, good morning. I just wanted to say thank you to um, all of the um, law enforcement individuals that were involved, everyone at the FBI, everybody at the Austin Police Department, um, the U.S. Marshal Service, and the Department of Public Safety. Um, thank you for all of your hard work. Um, it is a great um, thing that has happened. Thank you. As Dale said to all the agencies that were involved, thank you, uh, the men and women. I'm not going to give names, but they, they know their, their groups, their staff, everybody. Thank you for what you have done, succeeded in bringing him back to justice. Uh, it's, it's been a long time, but it's, the time is over. It's, we're, we're glad that he's here. And once again, thank you to everybody for the help uh, from anywhere they got the information. But thank you all so much. Okay, we'll open it up for a brief question and answer session. So we're still looking into all those facts. Um, he was down in Mexico. We'll, we'll go that far to say um, 
And really what happened is just the pressure mounted. You know, we had billboards up throughout the United States, throughout Mexico. We had advertisements going on various social media platforms with a $100,000 reward that we also offered for him. It really turned the pressure up everywhere. And again, I want to thank the media. You, know, you help us on these matters. And I think that's part of the power of the top 10 list is that the media jumps on it, you publicize it for us, the media companies that let us do advertising, and when you bring all of that pressure to bear, the pressure that was brought to bear here in Austin, it, it, it really showed that he, he had to come forward. Can you talk about how the um, electric brace or his bringing himself in contact PSD on? On our part, I'll say that he presented himself at the port of entry in Laredo, Texas. The task force went down and we grabbed him there and then we brought him back to Austin last night. Uh, not at this point in time. And then his demeanor, uh, did he say anything in the um, in the video about uh, his what the target was doing? No, not yet. Did anybody submit any kind of tips that are going to result in any money being given, or since he brought himself in, is that clear? So there were a lot of tips that came in. So a lot of people saw the media coverage and called in to the task force. Um, so we still have to work through all that, uh, but at this point in time, um, he turned himself in. Was he living alone, or was he aided by anyone in this force? We're, we're still looking into the situations of where he was living. Can you tell what the uh, disruption or how it appeared that he might be had been when he had taken care of himself? Was he kind of on stage in his brief kind of walk? I mean, I think he looked like a normal person coming across the border from Mexico. He said he was living in Mexico. Do you know what city? Yes, he was living in Mexico. We're not prepared at this point in time to say exactly where he was. Do you know if he had a family? We're still looking into all that. Were Mexican law enforcement, Mexican officials able to help with any tips or help locate him as well? So I think what I'll do now, uh, the actual investigators who, who did the work, uh, from the FBI and Austin Police Department, so I'll let them deal with some of those details that you're looking for, okay? What, what was the question? Were Mexican officials, law enforcement, able to help at all with tips or, or help find him as well? They were prepared to help. Um, in, in this case, we didn't need their help. What are the official charges? He was arrested yesterday on an unlawful flight to avoid prosecution. He's booked in the Travis County Jail on that charge. This will be a second charge uh, for first degree murder. Uh, and that's a, off an indictment. That's off an indictment with Travis County. So that will be executed um, after the UFAP is, or the unlawful flight from avoid prosecution is taken care of. Can you guys say and spell your name? Justin Noble, N O B L E. Robert Markham with the U.S. Marshals, um, last name M-A-R-C-U-M. And I'm J.J. Schmidt, S-C-H-M-I-D-T with Austin PD. So, Sam, you all are doing the investigation. Do you have any information as to what he was doing and, you know? So, uh, obviously, with the recent developments, uh, some things have to take place before we get to that point. We will um, continue the investigation. There's several things from that standpoint that we need to take care of. And hopefully, at some point, we'll be able to rele release more information um, regarding some of those questions you have. But at this point, we're just not prepared to make a statement on that. So for now, you just think it was the pressure that brought him to the border? Without a doubt. Again, like, like so many people have said today, the partnerships, the media's efforts to really get it out there for us, um, the investigative folks that have been behind the scenes to really make these things work, um, it was evident that his capture was going to be sooner than later. And I think the family, working with everybody else involved, realized that in the interest of justice, the best thing was for him to turn himself in. Has he received an attorney yet? Uh, he is represented, and we have been in contact with his attorney. How about that? Has it happened? Does he have family that he's been in contact with? Sure. As, as we stated initially during this investigation, there's a lot of family in the Austin area as well as other parts of the U.S. Uh, we've been in contact with several member, members of his family. Why is it that putting someone in the top 10, one of the like this, has the success rate? Is it just the attention that it receives? 
I think um, once you're on the top ten list, the individual realizes that he's going to be arrested one of two ways. Either he's arrested or he turns himself in. In this case, obviously, he knew he was about to get arrested, and so he went ahead and turned himself in on his own terms. From the FBI's point of view, there is no difference. He presented himself yesterday at the line. On one line is Mexico, the other line is the United States. He walked up to the line, said, I'm Robert Van Wiese. And I said, are you ready to turn yourself in? He said, I am. He stepped across and he was taken into custody. Can you speak at all to um, the DNA in the case? I know that that may or may not be a challenge moving forward. Uh, sure, so as far as the case goes, there are several uh, uh, things regarding the investigation that we can't really discuss. Uh, obviously, considering the crime scene, it's, it's no secret that there is DNA present in this, in this uh, case. So we'll continue to work with our partners at the district attorney's office, like, like uh, DA Moore said earlier, to get this prepared to move forward to court. We did receive information that, that he was going to be there. Uh, we probably don't want to discuss at this time exactly how that happened, but um, we were ready for him to turn himself in. One more question, please. Can you comment on how he was able to elude capture for so long? Uh, what measures did he take? What That's what we, we want to find out and we, we haven't been able to answer those questions yet. Um, like JJ was saying, at some point, we hope that uh, we can sit down and, and, and discuss what he's been up to all these years. Okay, agency representatives, uh, oh, I'm sorry, boss, did you want to come yeah. add to that? I just want to follow up on the question about the top 10 list. So when you look at the top 10 list, there's been 512 people put on it, 481 have been found. So that's about a 94% success rate. And to your question directly, why is it so high? Because by putting someone on the top 10 list, it generates massive media attention. It allows the full resources of the FBI to be brought to bear worldwide. So it, it is a, a large platform from a marketing standpoint, from a resource dedication standpoint, where we can really focus the efforts on that. And that's why we put people on the top 10, because we believe that through using the media, through using those mechanisms, we can we can find those people and bring them to justice. I just want to also thank the Austin Police Department Intel Unit. Uh, they were uh, a big help in in helping us uh, uh, try to develop these leads to find him.